Hi friends, today we'll be creating the character controller for our first person character. Last time we imported these FPS arms and next time we're gonna be creating the camera controller. Right, this will probably take a bit of time especially if you are a, if you are a beginner but you'll probably have to watch the video a couple times just to get everything right. If something doesn't work make sure you did everything correctly even the things you think are not important. So we have these low poly arms that we uh, imported last time. Uh, for the character we probably want some kind of a ground uh, plane that we're gonna walk on. So I'm gonna right click into the hierarchy, go 3D object and add a plane. This will add a nice plane to it and uh, you can change the position to 0, 0 and 0. I'm doing this by clicking 0 and then tab and 0 and tab. Just a quick tip. And then uh, we're not actually going to use our low poly arms as our player object. We're going to create an empty object that's much cleaner to do. And quickly just rename the plane to ground just so we don't forget. Okay, then right click, make sure you're not selecting anything. Uh, create empty and I'm going to call this one player and I'm going to set the position to 0, 0 and 0. And this is going to be the feet of our player. And then I'm going to right click the newly created player empty game object and I'm going to create a new empty game object and call it arms pivot. This will be the pivot for our model. So you'll have to set the correct height. I'm going to set mine to 1.65. I think that's a pretty good height for the arms. Once I change the position on the arms pivot, I'm going to right click again and create a new object. It's going to be an empty object called arms. And then I'm going to right click the arms pivot again and create a camera holder. This we're going to use next time when we'll be creating the uh, camera controller. I just want to have it there. And I'm going to take my low poly arms and I'm going to drag them into the arms empty object. And I'm going to change the position to 0, 0 and 0. And now you can see we can uh, rotate the arms pivot. By the way, you can change these modes by pressing uh, W for moving, uh, E to rotate, and R to scale. Just a quick tip again. You can see if we uh, move the arms pivot, uh, it will move nicely. And just for reference, I created this cube, which is 2 meters tall. This is about the size of the character. Arms might be a bit too high, but I think that will do fine. Okay, in order to move our character, we're going to use a character controller, which is a component made by Unity. So you can select your player, and here we're going to need to add some stuff to make it work. First, I'm going to add a rigid body. This will take care of physics. Uh, but we don't want to use the physics engine to add gravity or something else. So I'm going to check is kinematic. This makes sure it's not using any physics. But you should still keep it here because it, optimi it optimizes the game object. Uh, for movement. Just keep it there, click is, is kinematic, don't worry about it. I'm gonna add a capsule uh, capsule collider because we need something to collide with. The height I'm gonna set to 2 and I'm gonna set the center on the y-axis to 1 and then maybe you can change the radius to 0 0.35 just so it's not as thick. So this is something that's probably gonna collide with the walls, the doors and so on. Okay and lastly I'm gonna add a character controller and this will actually move our character. Again, I'm going to set the make sure that the height is 2. I'm going to set the radius to 0 0.35. And I'm going to set the center on the y-axis to 1. You want to make sure that this is at the feet level. If it's right here, then your character will pop up. If it's right here, then your character uh, will go down. So make sure that that's at the ground level. In order to actually use this character controller to move the player, I'm going to have to create a script. And I'm going to go to my assets in the project view, create a folder for scripts. And I'm going to right click or left click it and then create a new C sharp script inside it, which I'm going to call the player controller. Enter and double click. Visual Studio should open your script. If it doesn't, you can go into Unity, Edit, Preferences, and then in here you should find the external tools and external script editor should be Visual Studio Community. 
and if it's not in here you can browse and find it just google real quick where you uh, where unity installs visual studio i'm gonna drag and select all these methods delete them we're gonna add them later but we don't need unity to add them for us since this is a player controller we're gonna need some variables for our move speeds i'm gonna create a private float Float is a number with a decimal value, so something like 1.4 maybe. This one is going to be called move speed, and then I'm going to create a private float for uh, walk speed. I'm going to create a private float for run speed. And that's all we'll need for now. But we want to be able to see these values in, our, in, in Unity. So if you save this, go into Unity. Select your player and then drag the player controller onto it, just right under character controller. You can see that there's no variables in here and we want to be able to see them. That's because we set our uh, variable protection type to private and private means uh, no other scripts can access it so it's not going to get displayed in Unity. You could set this to public and then in Unity you'll be able to see it. It will also make it so other scripts can access it and we don't want that. Thankfully, in Unity, what you can do is add these types of brackets in here and then write serialized field and close it off again with this bracket. You can uh, write it with by pressing right alt and then F and G and just do this in front of each one. So serialized field, all of them. And this will make it so they keep private, but they're, they're gonna show up in Unity. And now you can see we can see them and edit them in here. All right, great job. So we're going to move uh, using a character controller. So we're going to have to get a reference to one of them. I'm going to create a private character controller and you can see it's a variable and I'm going to name it controller. Now what this does is uh, we need to tell the script which character controller we're going to use. So we could have maybe three different characters with character controllers and this script needs to know which one. So we're going to have to tell it to get the character controller that's on the same object as the script. The way we can do that is we can go and create a private void start and this method it's called each time the object is enabled or sorry the, the, the scene starts or the, the object is instantiated. So we can say controller is equal to get component and then we need a variable of type T, which means any kind. And we want to get a character controller variable. What this is going to do is going to go onto this object and it's going to get component character controller. So it's going to go to this one, check, is this a character controller? No. Is this? No. Is this? No. And is this? Yes. And then it's going to uh, store this as a reference. Okay, so that's basically what we're doing. Hopefully it makes a bit of sense. The way we're going to move the character is using a method made by Unity that's called uh, charactercontroller.move and you can check it out in the Unity documentation or Unity API and you can see that the charactercontroller.move takes in a vector3. A vector3 is a custom variable that uh, stores three floats. So for example, or sorry, for example, position is a vector3. Rotation is a vector3. Well, rotation is a quaternion, but we see it as a vector 3 in here and scale is also a vector 3 so three values of type float so we'll need to give it a vector 3 that's gonna determine the direction so I'm gonna create a new private vector 3 move direction and I'm gonna just end up with these uh, semicolons what you can do just for safety is set it equal to vector3.0. This means that it equals to a variable of 0, 0, 0. And then we're going to change it in the update method. Okay, so let's create a update method. This is called each frame. So this is where we want to update our movement. But firstly, if we want to update it, we need to get some kind of input. So whenever the player presses W, A, S, and D, we want to increase or decrease the movement. So we're gonna create a float mouse, or sorry, a float move x. So this is our movement on the 
x-axis and you can see if I open unity quick, uh, real quick uh, that the x-axis is the red one so this one so this is left and right and you can see that the z-axis would be the forward and backward the y-axis is the up and down you can see that in the top right here so if you ever get lost just look at this you'll be good so move x is equal to input dot get axis and I'm gonna get axis horizontal. This means left and right. And let me just write out uh, this last one and then we'll move to, on to the explanation. Uh, float move z is equal to input dot get axis vertical, which should be up and down, but it's actually forward and backwards. So these axes are actually made by Unity as well. So if you go to edit and then project settings, you can find the input manager and you have this axis here and you can see the horizontal and the vertical one. Horizontal one will uh, get input each time you press left or right arrow button or A and D on the keyboard. And the vertical one will get input with up and down arrows and W and S. So basically whenever you press, press W or the up arrow this uh, move Z will increase to 1 so we'll set it to 1 and whenever you press S or the down arrow it will go to minus 1 hopefully that makes a bit of sense at least and now we want to feed this to the move direction so move direction is equal to a new vector 3 that is equal to move X 0 on the Y because we don't want to move up and down right now and then move Z Okay, so this creates a new variable. Uh, basically, think of it as position again. So each frame is going to get new input. And for example, if we're moving forward, it will uh, change the Z to 1. So it would set the position to 0, 0, and 1, and then add it onto it. So each frame, this is going to update, and we'll be able to move. It's kind of hard to comprehend, especially if you're not, uh, you know, if you're new to this. But we also want to normalize the value. So we can say move direction is equal to move direction dot normalize. Sorry, my bad. It's normalized. Okay. So this will normalize it. We just said the move direction equal to move direction dot normalized. Um, this makes sure that no matter in which direction you move, uh, you move the same amount. So if you're moving forward and backwards, you'll move for one each frame, let's say. But if you move kind of diagonally, sometimes it will move for like 1.25 and that's not something you want. So this just makes sure that no matter in which direction you go, you're always moving the same amount. Okay, and now we just need to call our uh, function. So we can go controller for our character controller dot move and then we can feed it the newly created move direction. Uh, this would work, but there's some other things we can do. We can multiply by time dot delta time this makes sure that no matter how many frames you have, it will always move the same amount. So since this function is called each frame, for someone who has 30 frames, it will move much less than for someone who has 120 frames. This just makes sure that all the time it's good. And also, just before we multiply with time delta time, I want to multiply with move speed. Because this value will only be 1, and then we can multiply by some other value and get a bigger one because we probably want to move then one more than one unit at a time but move speed is actually not a speed it's more of a container of sorts so this think of it as a box and then uh, for example if we're not pressing shift we're gonna put the walk speed into this box but if we're pressing shift we're gonna take out the walk speed and put in the run speed Hopefully that makes kind of some sense at least. So we have to set the move speed because for now it's uh, zero. In my start method, I will, I will just set the move speed equal to walk speed. So just when we start, I'm going to set move speed equal to walk speed because we did not implement running yet and this, this should work fine. Okay, in Unity now, you can go to your player controller script and set the walk speed to something like maybe five will do good. And then I'll just drag my game view 
to the side here just so I can see what's happening at all times and then I'll click play and you can see if I press S it moves backwards if I press W moves forward left and right works as well and diagonally works as well but you can see we have a bit of sliding going on so when I stop holding the S button or sorry the W button for example uh, you can see that it will start sliding a bit so we want to get rid of that that's because we're using get axis and this applies some smoothing you can use get axis raw which will apply no smoothing and I think this gets a uh, much better you know responsiveness so just change get access to get access raw in both uh, cases here and now if you play you can see that there is no sliding anymore it's much more responsive and it works much better before we continue I just wanna kinda organize this a bit so this is a function for example but we can create another function inside of it and just call that one uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and create a new private void and I'll call it handle movement and just close it up with the uh, brackets like that make sure you have these curly brackets as well and I'm just gonna take all of this just like that copy it delete it and paste it into the handle movement and now in update I can just call the handle movement and it will run all of this the same uh, pretty much the same thing but just better organized and now I can uh, collapse this code and have it look much nicer I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna create a new private void which I'm gonna call get references and that means uh, I'm just gonna take my controller get component copy it delete it put it into get reference and then I can just call get reference up here just makes it look nicer and easier to read just like that and also for the move speed equals walk, walk speed, I'm going to create a private void for init variables. This means initialize variables, and this is pretty much just initializing variables. And I'm just going to place it in there, and in the start method, call the init variables. So I just uh, organized all of these into special places. And now if we need some other reference, we can just add it into here. Uh, it kind of makes everything much easier. Same thing for the variables and the movement. Just like that, looks much nicer. So I want to add some running, so I'll do that in the update method again, just so it's easier to look at. Above the handle movement, I'm gonna check if input dot get key down, I'm gonna say key code dot left shift. So this is just when we press it down, this is not holding it get key down just when you press it down it get called one it gets called once and that's it okay and I'm also gonna uh, check if input dot get key up key code dot left shift so we're gonna have one method for uh, when it gets pressed down and when it gets pressed up or when you stop holding it so this is gonna be a uh, not a toggle but hold I guess so you're going to have to hold shift to run. And simply whenever we run, we just want to change our speed. And we already created a variable here, run speed. And what we can do is say move speed equals to run speed whenever we start running. And whenever we stop running, we can say move speed equals to walk speed. Pretty simple. Let's go check it out. I'm going to set my run speed to something pretty big like 10 just so we can see a difference. And I'm also going to go to my ground and I'm going to change the scale from 1 to like 5 times 1 times 5. Just like that. Just so we have a place to run. Uh, and I'm also going to move my camera just like that so we can see it. Click play. Okay, you can see I can move forward and backwards. And if I hold shift, I move much faster. It's really simple. Okay, again, let's just clean this up before we continue. I'm going to create a new private void here. I'm going to call it handle running. And in there, I'm just going to place these two if statements just like that. Copy, delete, paste in here, and just call handle running. Make sure you call it above the handle movement or else it's not going to work properly because this changes the move speed and move speed applies to our move direction if we 
change the move speed after we already applied it it just doesn't work all right lastly i want to add some gravity and jumping currently if i moved the character up just like this so he's floating in the ground and clicked play i could I could fly basically, uh, he wouldn't fall down, he would just go like that. Uh, we're gonna have to do this ourselves because uh, Unity's character controller doesn't really support gravity anymore. It used to have a function called is grounded, which would check uh, if the character controller is grounded, but something doesn't work about it, so you have to create your own. But don't worry, we're gonna make it pretty simple. Under here, I'm going to create uh, a couple new variables. Uh, I'm going to create a uh, private float for ground distance. And I'm going to make sure that is serialized as well. So this really rough bracket, serialized field, and close it off. I'm also going to add a serialized field private layer mask that I'm going to call the ground mask. Don't worry, I'll explain what they do a bit later. And as well, I'm gonna up here add a serialized field private float um, gravity. This is the amount of gravity. I kind of want to keep these uh, a bit separate right here. So this is the, the movement and then the gravity. I'm gonna need a couple more things. I'm gonna add a serialized field private bool. Bool is just a true or false value. Uh, that I'm gonna call is grounded or is character grounded is grounded already exists so I'm gonna call it is character grounded and by default I'm gonna set it equal to false just like that and then I'm also gonna create a float or sorry I'm gonna create a vector 3 this one can be private uh, called velocity and I'm going to set velocity equal to vector3.0 as well. Okay, so we kind of added a lot. Let me explain. Gravity is the strength of our gravity. Pretty self-explanatory. Ground distance is... Well, let me tell you like this. So, the way we're going to do this is uh, we're going to encode, obviously, uh, each frame. We're going to create a small sphere at the bottom of the player right here that is going to check if that sphere is colliding with something that has a layer of ground if you select the player you can see it has a layer here by default it's set to default our ground has a default layer so what we have to do is change that and make sure that that layer is ground but we'll do that later so this little sphere right here is going to check hey is this colliding with something that's called ground well yes okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the is character grounded to true if it's not colliding with something that has a ground then we're gonna set it to false ground distance is the size of that small sphere at the player's feet ground mask is the layer that's recognized or rec recognized as the uh, ground layer this velocity vector 3 0 is the same as the move direction here it's just a value that we're gonna feed our other values into just so we can use it with our character controller okay I'm gonna do it in the update again and I'm gonna do it above the handle running and handle movement functions firstly we want to know if the player is grounded that shouldn't be too hard we can just say is grounded or is character grounded which is our boolean value or variable is equal to and then we're gonna set it equal to physics dot check sphere and you can see we need to give it a position which is transform dot position and we need to give it a radius which is our ground distance and now this is gonna create that small sphere at the bottom of the player which is you know right here so if you select the player transform that position just means the the position of it so at this situation it will be 5.03 so just right here right here and it's going to check in a radius of the ground distance which we're going to set later 
Okay, before we continue again, I'm gonna create a private void handle is grounded. And I know it doesn't kind of it kind of doesn't make sense to have just this one line in a function, but I like doing it because it's much easier to read later on. You're gonna have a project for half a year. You're gonna come back and it's gonna be hard to read, but this way it's cool. Okay, under handle is grounded. I'm gonna handle the actual gravity. So I'm gonna set the velocity, which is our vector three value for for up and down, and I'm gonna set it equal to or plus equals to gravity times time dot delta time this plus equals basically means uh, this right here so this means the exact same thing as this this is just much shorter so that's the way I do it this is just going to lower our character for the gravity amount times that time dot delta time same as we move the character this is the same it's just up and down and velocity dot y is the up and down axis if you remember correctly and then i need to feed this to my controller again controller dot move and then i'll feed it velocity and i'll have to multiply it with time dot delta time again make sure you're multiplying with time dot delta time twice that's just the physics of it and one more thing that is probably going to be hard to understand for you. I'm just going to up here check if is grounded or is character grounded. And velocity dot y uh, is less than zero. If that's true, if both of these are true right here. So if we are grounded and velocity dot y is less than zero, we're going to set velocity dot y to something small like minus two right there and F just means that it should be a float register as a float basically uh, right now if we did it without this it would uh, keep the, the decreasing velocity dot y each frame so even if we're grounded velocity dot y would go down and this just makes sure it caps it at minus two uh, which gives it uh, a nice feeling just do this if you don't understand it it's fine again I'm gonna take all of that and I'm going to create a private void handle a gravity right here. And I'm going to take all of it just like this. Copy, delete, put it into handle gravity, and then just call handle gravity right under handle is grounded. Okay, and now our gravity should work if we go into Unity. I'm going to set my gravity to some to like minus 9, for example. Ground distance to 0.2. Ground mask we have to uh, create. You can see that the ground mask lists all the layers uh, as they are here. So you can just click anywhere on each or on any object. Go to layer here and add layer. And I'm going to create a ground layer somewhere around here. Okay. And now we have a ground layer. If we click your if you click your ground plane, you can go to layer and then ground. And now this layer is registered as ground and our script can read it as ground. But we have to tell the ground mask is equal to ground and only ground. And it's character grounded, don't touch, that's gonna touch itself. And now yeah, you can see that the character is moved up. If I click play, he falls down very slowly and touches the ground. Okay, and now he, he can move on the ground he's not flying anymore you can play with the values but lastly I want to add the jump this will be pretty easy I want to add it in between handle is grounded and handle gravity right here and we're just gonna check if input dot get key down key code dot space so each time we press down space we're just gonna uh, Sorry, just like that, we're going to set velocity.y plus equals. And uh, we just have to do a small calculation here. Mathf dot square root. And then we need some kind of a value. Let's set that to 10 right now. Multiply by minus 2 and then multiply by gravity. This 10 is our jump force. So I'm going to go up here and right under gravity. Or I can do it right under run speed serialize field private float jump 
force. So that is the force that we're going to use to jump with. And I'm going to just change this 10 to jump force just so we can, you know, control that value. Uh, this is a formula for the, the jump free fall thing. Um, props to Brackies who, who showed me this or I saw it in one of, one of his videos and it works amazing. So this is pretty much all you need for jumping. You're just going to increase it for one frame and then next frame is going to go down. Okay, and I'm just going to place this into its own function, private void handle jumping. Right, I'm going to take this small if statement and I'm going to place it in there and call handle jumping in between these two. And now we should be able to jump if we change our um, our value, jump force here. I'm going to change it to something like 25 and I'm going to change the gravity to like minus 12 maybe. Before we end, if you want to organize this a little bit, uh, you can go here and for example, add a header. So with these same rough brackets, header, and then I can write in here uh, something like gravity, right? And up here, I'll do like header and I'll call it uh, like variables or move variables, for example, right? So make sure you do like that. And if you go into Unity now, you'll see you'll have like a small title like this. So we have move variables and we have gravity variables. It's just much nicer to look at. If we play, you can see the player will fall down and now you can jump. Oh, I added definitely way too much. Uh, let me just, my bad. Okay. I added way too much jump force. I'm going to set that to like five. Although no, I'm going to set it to three. And now I can jump and fall down, but you can see I can jump infinitely. That's because we didn't check if we're grounded. So down here in handle jumping, I'm just going to check if we press space, and if is character grounded is true. So if we're grounded and we play a space, then we want to jump. Okay, just like that. And now it should work perfectly. Now we can jump and we can run and we can move nicely. And next episode, we're going to be adding the camera so we don't have to look at it, look at it from this weird angle. So yeah, join me next time and hopefully this helps you. Bye bye.